Hello. Good morning. Good morning. A very warm welcome again to this online service. I'm sure, like uh, Louise and I, you're looking forward to Monday's announcement by the government about hopefully restrictions being eased. I'm really hoping that uh, we won't need to wear masks as we uh, meet for on-site worship in the future, but we'll we'll see. Uh, a week on Sunday, that's the 20th of June, we've invited my son's uh, theatre company to come and do a performance uh, in his puppet van. So it's called The Lost Colour, uh, details at the end of this service. There's still very limited space available at Wollaston and a bit more space available at Bozier. So if you'd like to come to that, just drop me an email and I'll get you booked in. Lord, um, as, we, as we worship in this way again this morning, Lord, would, would we know your presence with us, your cross before us? Lord, would we drink from you this morning? Would we feed from you this morning as we worship together? In Jesus' name, Amen. amen.
saw there was a clip of myself playing this elderly gentleman at a game of table tennis and I walked away from the experience with a very valuable lesson. This was back in December and I was playing these guys at table tennis and this elderly gentleman, he must have been, I think he was in his 70s or 80s, came across to me because I was I was beating these guys and he came across to me, he challenged me. He said, can I give you a game? I have to be completely honest. I, I had these preconceived ideas of how we would play. I made a bit of a judgment. I thought he's a bit old. His reactions won't be as fast. You know, he won't be able to be as nimble or move around the table as quickly as I can. I already made an opinion and a judgment of him. Boy, was I wrong. 
he was the most competitive player that I've played and it went right down to the wire. It was a fantastic match. And it got me thinking about how we sometimes make judgments on people's appearance or how they look, or maybe their, their color or the fact that they're male or female. And the Bible talks about this. He says in 1 Samuel 16, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as a man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks in the heart. And it really got me thinking about how in life we can sometimes make judgments on the way people look or maybe even the way they sound or the way they dress. But taking that lesson from the Bible is that we really need to move away from those judgments and really look at someone in their heart and talk to them and find out about them without making prejudgments. So my challenge to you is, you know, when you meet new people or um, you see even someone on the TV or in your school, college, university, wherever you are, take time to get to know someone without making those prejudgments. Maybe uh, pleasantly surprised who you kind of connect with and build relationships with. Then Samuel left for Ramah, but Saul went up to his home in Gibeah of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again, though Samuel mourned for him, and the Lord was grieved that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord, invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then made Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. This is such a great reading this morning. You know, Samuel the prophet is asked by God to go and anoint one of Jesse's sons to be king. And the backstory uh, to this is that uh, Saul is the current king over Israel, uh, but Saul messed up, he didn't obey God's commands, and so God rejected him as king. And now the prophet Samuel has been asked to anoint a new king. 
It's interesting that God doesn't simply say, go and anoint David, you know, Jesse's youngest son. There's a process to go through. The Lord simply says, you are to anoint for me the one I indicate. You know, often the Lord doesn't make it clear uh, for us. You know, often he'll just tell us the next step. And uh, we may want our path ahead to uh, be all laid out clearly for us to see. Uh, but the Lord doesn't work that way. Often he'll just give us the next step to take. And I think that's because he wants to build trust in him. So Samuel arrives at Bethlehem and he has uh, Jesse and his sons invited to the sacrifice. And before the procession begins, Samuel sees uh, Eliab, the eldest of Jesse's sons. And you kind of think, surely that's the one the Lord will have chosen. And verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And all of the sons are then passed before Samuel, but the Lord doesn't choose any of them. And finally, David is sent for the youngest son who's out with the sheep. And they all wait for David to come. And of course, the Lord says this one. This is the one you are to anoint. And Samuel anoints him. And it says, he anoints him in the presence of his brothers. How pleased you think they were? Um, well, we know they, they resented it. You know, what's the state of our hearts when someone is promoted in front of us? That can be in our work or our ministry life. When someone seemingly less qualified, uh, less able, less impressive gets the nod before us. What's uh, our hearts like when that happens? Scholars think David was probably about 12 years old at this time. So, you know, he's a young boy and, you know, he wasn't even invited to the party. You know, if you think you are too young or you don't look right, or you feel overlooked, then this passage should be really encouraging to you. Because the Lord looks at our hearts. You know, we're never too young, we're never too quiet. David had just been watching his sheep. How many of us have felt insignificant in the unseen things we do? Well, God sees it all and God values the heart above all else you know in these days of racial conflict and discussion and both football and critic, uh, cricket are, are wrestling with us at the moment aren't they you know should England take the knee during the Euros uh, should the ECB ban a cricketer for past tweets it's a tiny reminder that God values the heart above all else and so you know maybe should we it's not the color of our skin uh, the race we belong to how we look or how clever or not we are the job we do it's a person's heart that is important uh, to the lord <coughs> proverbs 4 23 says guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life you know the heart is the seat of our affections and desires you know what was in david's heart that god valued so much well, we need to understand david's life uh, to know that uh, i just want to use a few passages to help us get a glimpse of what it was that god valued in David's heart. The Psalms are always a good place to know, that, uh, to know about David. You know, he wrote Psalm 139 and uh, verses 1 to 4 uh, is this. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. 
You know, David had cultivated such an intimate relationship uh, with God. You know, he knew God and was known by God. And it started when he was a boy. You know, after our reading, we get the, uh, the account of David and Goliath. And if you know that story well, you'll know that part of the motivation for David to fight Goliath was because he said the Lord had delivered him from the paw of the lion and the bear. And so if he had been delivered by God in that context, then he'll deliver him from Goliath. David knew God and was known by him. David didn't say, you know, I know you when I'm in church. I know you when the music starts and when I raise my hands. He says, when I sit and when I rise, you know. You're familiar with all my ways. David's heart was such that his entire life was open to the Lord. You know that well-known uh, proverb, Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. It was written by Solomon, David's son, so I kind of think his dad taught Solomon well. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. In all your ways, acknowledge him. You know, for us to acknowledge someone, it's kind of like, you know, we see someone across the street and we kind of put a hand up, give them a quick wave, hi there, yeah, must, must catch up, and we carry on uh, walking. That's what, it, what we think to acknowledge means, but that's not what it means here. That's not what this word means. The word here means to know in an experiential or intimate way. The word is the same Hebrew root word as um, when it says in Genesis, Adam knew Eve and she conceived and brought forth a son. You know, Adam didn't walk uh, through the garden and kind of just acknowledge Eve. Uh, Hi Eve, yeah, we must get together at some point. It was a it was a coming together, it was experiential. You know, God wants us to come to know him in that experiential way in all areas of our life. Whether that is our family life, uh, our friends, our financial life, our uh, emotional life, our mental health, our business life or work life. It could be our school life. God wants us to know him in all areas of our life. And it may be that in one of these areas of life, we have a level of a maturity or we have a measure of God's grace over us in that life, in that area of our life. So, for example, you know, I may be great with friends. I may be able to make friends well. Um, I'm able to be a good friend to others. I'm able to speak wisdom into my friends life because I've got a measure of God's grace over that area of my life but I also may be a disaster when it comes to finances you know I may be full of fear and anxiety about my financial life because I haven't got God's grace over that area of life well David's heart was such that all his ways were familiar to God. Psalm 139 14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Again, you know, David knows and is known by God. And as David knows God, he comes to know more about who he is. You know, God knows us better than we know us. Verse 17 of that psalm says, How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. You know, David valued the thoughts of God, what God thinks of him. You know, do we know what God thinks of us more than what other people think of us, more than what maybe uh, social media think of us? In the past, Louise and I have encouraged people to do the garden heart prayer. 
and it's a, a simple task whereby you spend time with the Lord and you ask the Lord to show you how he sees you as a garden. It's a good exercise to do. You know, maybe the next time you have some time alone with the Lord, ask him, how does he see you as a garden? What does that look like? And then just explore what you see in your mind. And finally, verses 23 to 24 of that Psalm 139 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Now David was vulnerable before the Lord. In all his experiences, in the good times and in the challenging times, he opened his heart to God. Even though my anxious thoughts, God. God values the heart above all else. It's a person's heart that is important to the Lord. Amen. Yeah.
we pray. Lord, um, we do want to, to give you uh, what is going on and uh, around us politically at the moment with um, the meeting of the G7 nations in Cornwall. And Lord, we do pray for your hand on that. Lord, we pray for your power over that, for your sovereignty there in that place. We thank you for the signs of um, cooperation. We thank you for a heart to look at the issues we face, whether it be global warming or, or vaccinating the world. And Lord, we do pray for your justice, your mercy, and for almost a thinking outside the box and a, a being generous towards other nations. Lord, would you bless world leaders that, that attempt to govern with justice, with diligence, with integrity. Would you bless them? Would you honour them for the responsibility and the burden they carry? Lord, we thank you that the Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Lord, you know the heart of leaders and you also know our heart. And Lord, uh, as we come before you as your children, as we worship you, as we give you what's on our hearts and we're open, we unfold our hearts to you. I pray, Lord, that you would do a good work in us. Lord, would you heal what might need healing? in our hearts. Would you highlight what might still be dark places that need dealing with? Lord, would you increase by your spirit working within us, our willingness to be yours, for our hearts to be just yours, for us to carry your purposes in our generation, as David did. Lord, would we have hearts that go after you? Would we have hearts that seek you? And Lord, as you call upon us, as you call us to you, Lord, would our hearts leap with joy with that and uh, just pursue you? I pray, Lord, for relationships with you that are just leaning in to you daily, that are trusting you daily in all circumstances. Lord, that your purposes might be seen in our lives, your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you so much again for joining us today. And I hope you have a really great week. If you're local, then it'd be great to see you at one of our on-site uh, services. Details of all the services, when the meeting, how you book in, are in our newsletter. If you don't receive that, you'd like to receive that, then drop me an email and I'll make sure you're on my list. So I say have a fantastic week and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Oh, Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sacrifice. Welcome back to Pure Paint Radio, the place of pigments, paint and prattle. Today we are featuring a study on Malcolm Brushel, the Scottish painter. He's a world-renowned pioneer in creating his very own pigment paints. 
The colours he creates are of the most vivid, superb shades you would ever have seen. All this to say we are eagerly awaiting his new release. Pink. Yes, pink. <laughs> safe to say the world is holding its breath. Yeah. Uh...